What's up? 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 We back. It is uh, how to grouch though Christmas 11th year in uh, annual, and we over here at the historic Warfield where I think this 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 black ass nigga on the couch and myself might have came here one night, might have been on some shrooms, might have went to a rap show, might have took. <laughs> Give a quick wee crap. What happened here? Hey, hey, it was like this. We like lit as a motherfucker, chilling, watching the show, feeling really good. This is back when I'd only drink like a half a beer or a beer. So I was kind of like sober, but you know, halfway. But I just really remember like it was the best part of the show. Tribe was ripping. And all of a sudden I saw somebody on the speaker on the right and it was rocking back and forth on top. It was hella high. It was like death to find. And I was like, yo. That's fucking Buster Rhymes up there. Like that fool's crazy as fuck. He's killing it. I remember at that yeah, yeah, at that point I'm like at the highest peak of the shroom. So I'm like I'm like egging them all like do it, Buster, do it. And then and then and then I look I look closer and all of a sudden this nigga got yanked off. I was like, why y'all yank him off the speaker? Like, that's a long ass drop. And then I saw motherfuckers coming out and kicking him. And I was like, wait, that ain't Buster right there. That ain't Buster. And it was just an overzealous, eager, zealous, you know, fan. Just really wanted to dance. And, and the thing's sad about it because you guys, you think, you know, your fans, you should be able to go up there and dance on studio. I mean, dance on the stage, get on the speaker, rock it back and forth. But no, don't do that. That This isn't your time. This is your time to watch or your time to get your ass whipped, you know, for a lot of people. And me, I just, I mean, I have thrown a person off stage and just <laughs> saw them walk out of the, the venue, right after I remember in Seattle at the, at the Nectar, I felt, I felt bad, but you just can't get on stage. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa. That's, that's because this dude did this to me. And girl, you don't do this to somebody, dude. I mean, what the fuck is that? That's, I mean, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm a Christian, man. I just don't play that. Okay, look. Why don't you say to people, introduce who are you? Everybody, my name is the infamous Sunspot Jones, B Fat Vision, um, brother from another planet, uh, Dusty Black, your stepdad almost, uh, all of those. Tell her how we met. We met basically uh, back in the day. I was going out with one girl, he was going out with another girl. They were best friends at Clark Kerr, UC Berkeley. And uh, man, we just we just kicked. Yeah, they're two white girls, and we just the two niggas. They are some that are. I'm gonna say a couple. You know, I know a couple of Mexican and a couple of Asian girls. But anyway, I ain't saying all that. You know, I mean, I'm a Christian Catholic Jew. So anyway, I'm just saying these moments kind of cause everything to cosmically come together because like you know we met yeah we <laughs> and she was doing snow off the, no no she was not no 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 but yeah so it was like you know people brought us together and then we just kept bringing together people you know with our thing and, and it made it into everyone's thing and it was beautiful yeah i was already in a group um it was Yapos, Young Asiatic Prophet of Soul. And uh, then it was, before. after that, it was Anansi, it was Snuffleupagus, it was Zach the Lego Maniac. These motherfuckers, yeah, these motherfuckers weren't down. They were more about their girlfriends and, and going to the mosque and all these things, which I understand, we're growing up. But when me and him met, we were like, man, we ain't got shit to do. We just got nothing to do but to do this. And we just did it all day, every day. I was like looking for something to do. Like I, I wanted to get out of LA. I I try to go to um, what do you call it? Thirteenth uh, grade, which is better known as uh, Santa Monica College, where niggas just kind of like pay to go to class, pay for classes, but play dominoes in the quad. You know about that? I don't know if y'all niggas still do that shit. Maybe college is too expensive to be fucking around like that. But that was thirteenth grade. So then. He presented that, you know, I wanted to rap, I wanted to get it, get serious, and this nigga, he had ideas and shit and everything, and even had a spot for me on the flow, on the side of the bed, and rest in peace, Auntie Margie, oh my God, I love that woman. Now, we were, we was like, you know, 
we're just being young and we're taking advantage of everything like you know when it came to being ambitious and making our shit happen we were like serious about it. a lot of people they always want to talk about what they want to do but we was really like well fuck this we are going to go to europe I know, I know we evicted, but we, we, you know, we probably got a house in Europe. And next, you know, we in Europe. Next, you know, motherfuckers hitting us up from Japan. Next, you know, people hitting us from Australia. Next, you know, like motherfuckers are just showing up at your house, and you're like, "What are you doing with my mom?" And you know, <laughs> good days, man. Good days. No, we're not gonna bring that up. We're not gonna bring that up. It's, I'm just saying, it was a, you know, it was the beginning of young, young Negroes out the west, you know. Just doing it as much as we could to make our you know bro, future better, and we bro, did. Bro, bro. Uh, Control destiny. Do you remember the first time we went out the country? Bro? First time we went, to, went out of the country, we went to England. We got rejected on entrance to get into England. They were like, "No, you can't get in." And I was like, "No, you can't say much more to me. I got to talk to your supervisor." And then they brought their supervisor, and we had to go actually into the small ass glass room where they like you know isolate you interrogate you and, and the dude comes in he goes okay what, what is this we you know we already rejected you and i was like all right i looked at tom and i was like all right here we go chop 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 next thing you know he goes and please have a good time in in, in england i was like that's right man we ain't going we ain't doing nothing wrong this was before uh, muslims replace niggas is the worst niggas <laughs> wow yeah 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 you used to like travel internationally yeah, we would show up and they'd be like, "No, you can't come. No, 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 you can't come in." Yeah, <laughs> and we had like the big beards and we had like a little bit more yeah. uh, Africa tan. It was like tan, tan. They'd be like. I can't even imagine traveling nowadays. I mean, it's just a different thing because if your name is Muhammad, even if your name is Larry Muhammad Nelson, they're like, wait, there's Muhammad in there, you know, but my name's Larry Nelson. Nah, fuck that. It's Muhammad Nelson. And it's like, it's just a new world, but we were lucky. Honestly, we were lucky to actually do it and it, to come out successful. And like, we never had a time where we were really in jail. I mean, him and Grouse were in jail in England. No, I'm sorry, in France when we tried to hop... The, the train from Monaco back to Nice and not fill out our URL passes and motherfuckers got the AK-47. I had to go to the embassy. There's a whole nother thing to get niggas out. But, you know. Because <laughs> we got open cases. I mean, we ain't gonna lie. Man, it's called Hella Hella Dreams Filmworks, and uh, it, the dream continues. That's right, man. Man, the first one is She's Got a Plan, which we just sold basically to a company. I don't want to get into it, but like, it's like. <laughs> hey, 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 yeah, I'm going to be handing out turkeys on Thanksgiving. I'm handing out turkeys. I'm, I'm going to be doing that. Yeah, 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 I see that. Nigga, where that porridge at? You say he's going to break me off. But like, niggas ain't rich. But we're making moves, and things are happening to where, you know, a lot of good things are in the future. Oh, my mom was like, oh, hell no! Because when black people on the news, it's usually for the bad reason, you know? This is good. This is so good. You good, yeah. So, I'm saying, hey, and... And wait, and it's the movies and it's the children's organization where I'm doing the children's programming. I'm teaching kids how to listen to music. I mean, learn by listening to music. You know, this was one of the things, you know, Bubbles the Brave, aim for greatness when you see this, you know. It's always about like teaching kids loving and loving themselves and making something happen in your life because they will take you down, make you believe that you're not worth nothing. They, you know who they is, is them. They is them. They know, that's right. So, you know, it's just a time of just we are in the final stages of Earth and we're going to have to leave this planet soon. They're finding new places for us to go. Make sure you're smart enough to man that ship. That's it. Uh -oh. you, better get on the right ship. you better get that smart stuff to man that ship because they will put your ass on the wrong ship and you'll still be on Earth. Look at this one blue logo. Look, read it. World. The end. That's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying. You better get your education on. You better get your smarts on. You better stop being arrogant. Love your family because they're going to be the people that's going to be helping you on that ship and that new world you're going to be at. Yeah. And, and like, you know, just, just know that your future is not set. You can do anything. Get a family, bro. Uh, one of the things I hella admire about you, bro, not just the fact that you damn near tell me everything I fucking know about this shit, but besides that, um, 
how you uh, look out for your mom. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to my mom, that's my grown ass teenager, you know what I mean? She do whatever the hell she want, and I just gotta be there just to be like, no, my mom, this way, this way. No, my mom, this way. no, my mom, you know she gonna be like, shut up, you know? I know at least I'm trying to put my grown teenager yeah, man, in a place. Off of I do, man. I got. I got to make sure she's okay. Yeah. You got to go get my mama some hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> got to go to the hair shop. You know what I'm saying? Got to go to Sizzler. Today she tried to suck me in to go to Applebee's. I don't go to Applebee's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that no. Like now it's yeah. nasty. No, sister used to be. You know, it used, it used to, be to be good. It used to oh, be bomb. It used to be good. Now that shit's like, you know, the school food at a cafeteria. <laughs> yeah, I eat a little something. I ain't going to. No, I get the shrimp. I'm a black man. Of course I get the scrimps, man. Get the scrimps and nasty ass steaks. I ain't going to get into that. But, you know, but all I'm saying is. No, I mean. Yeah, I mean, you are kind of spending fifty dollars at Sizzler. Sometimes I'd be like, fifty dollars, you know? This is a fucking Sizzler. Oh, we went about fifty dollars, nigga. What about Fungo? Fungo. Tokyo. Oh right, <laughs> right, dude. Those sandwiches. We be buying sandwiches. The sandwiches be twenty five dollars a sandwich. I'm like, you Japanese motherfuckers really are into this shit right here. We was not wealthy by any means. No, no. We was out there, uh, Tokyo rich. Is Tokyo rich buying them down twenty five dollars sandwiches? Yeah, and stealing niggas' purses at the club. All right. Now whoa, whoa, whoa! It was not me. Hey, they hey, still got your picture. Hey. I'm seeing. Okay. Allegedly, <laughs> I'm just gonna say what after the couple times that I was out there, we came back. And they put lockers in the club. I don't know why. Don't put niggas in your country. That's what it is. Don't bring niggas in there because they will fuck your shit up. See? No, wait, wait. Let's talk about this. I'll take you for another history with this. We went to, the first time we went to Japan, the only other fools that really had been out there was like one day and seeing some other fools like that. And then what girls was just coming up to us on the street, like hopping out of cars down there like, yeah. oh, shit, like, oh, oh, oh. Is it true? Is it true? We, well, well, you already know. Out. But then, much respect, no disrespect, to Wu-Tang Clan came out there and they damn near fucked the whole country. <laughs> and then we came out and the girls was like, oh, oh, you remember? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, you know, they, they, they did it up the way they should. I ain't yeah. going to be mad. It's called Wu-Tang for a reason. Yeah. Wu-Tang clan ain't done the fuck with Yeah, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. Like, we meet, meet the girl, and, you know, we take them to a nice dinner and, you know, hang yeah, out. I'm pulling the bitches upstairs in DJ Quiet Storm house. Okay. Yeah, or in the club. It's just dirty. Okay, now look. Oh, oh. <laughs> I got a baby somewhere, dog. All right, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's like a little nigga in Yokohama City right now. To oh, no. he, he's out there talking about three point two. <laughs> I love you, bro. Sounds about Jones. Bloop. <laughs> <laughs>